Austin Kropp has joined me in the studio. Austin is a biblical counselor for our residential program here at Pure Life. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, thanks for having me. Okay, so Austin, this episode is part of our Key Lessons on the Road to Freedom series, and what we're going to talk about today is um, choices, and I think that as we go through this interview, people will really understand why we need to talk about this when we're thinking about key lessons on the road to freedom. So first off, let me just ask you this question. What, how would you, what kind of importance would you say Scripture places on the choices that we make day in and day out? Yeah, I think it's quite a lot of importance. Um, there's a lot of scripture that refers to this sort of thing. Um, but I think it's important for us, especially to like think about the fact that our decisions are leading us places. So if you want to think of it in the way in like the term terminology of building a building, you could say, each decision I make every day, not just like the big decisions, like, oh, who should I marry? What, you know, where should I move to or whatever that looks like? Um, no, like every single decision during the day, it's like I could, it could be uh, figuratively like putting a brick in mortar. I'm putting something substantial in my life and I'm building decision by decision. Something's being erected. Or you could be like, uh, using the analogy of a person going on a journey. So every step is actually taking me towards a destination. Mm. So, um, and you can kind of see this in Galatians 6, 7 and 8. Um, Paul is saying, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption, but the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. So from that, I'm seeing this is really important for me. If I'm going to be continuing on this road toward freedom, that I need to be very careful with the choices that I'm making, very intentional about those. Hmm. Okay, so the decisions that I make day in and day out are either contributing to that lifestyle, mm -hmm. that new lifestyle, or they're like hindering or even just setting me mm -hmm. back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or taking me in a totally different direction. Correct, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we're talking about making godly choices in our lives daily, I feel like we also have to talk about temptation mm -hmm. because um, that's a huge part of the conversation. It's not just like um, the Lord is showing us, hey, here's how to have a godly life and here's mm -hmm. how to have a life in the spirit. It's also that there's these forces that are trying to take us in a different direction. Um, what, when, you, when you look at scripture, what are the forces that, are, that we need to be aware of that are trying to take us in a, in a bad direction? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I see mainly three different forces or sources of temptation um, in Scripture, and it's pretty clear, clear cut in this way. You're going to be facing uh, temptations from the flesh, from the world, and from the devil. Mm. So what that looks like is from my flesh, these are like my sinful desires from my fallen nature. It's just like what I desire in my fallenness, things that come out of that. So, and then the world, I thought about this, is kind of like, is it's the system that houses what my sinful flesh wants. So it's those, um, the entertainment, the comfort, the ease, the pleasure, um, all of that, the world is enticing, can be drawing into that. So. Um, and then you have the devil um, and the spiritual forces that he has. The enemy has, is trying to influence us and draw us into different atmospheres and trying to influence our thoughts, introduce thoughts, you know, to entice or to monopolize on that flesh inside of me to 
cause me to sin. Mm. So all of these are kind of working together in a way to draw us away. Mm -hmm. Could you just like, I don't know, could we go through like a daily scenario mm -hmm. and, and could you express like how that kind of works itself out? Sure. So um, let me think about this. So let's say, for example, um, just put it in my own life. Um, I'm not sure exactly <laughs> if I've ever actually had this scenario, but let's say, for example, um, my wife and I just get off on the wrong foot in the morning. Um, there's just some kind of like tangible um, tension between us. She says something and I'm kind of irritated. So immediately like my flesh is like, okay, like I don't want to like deal with that sort of, I, um, that sort of like friction. I want, I want some kind of comfort. I need some kind of outlet and I need, I don't like relational tension at all. That's just for me. I, I need to have my relationships free <laughs> and open. So that can cause me to be tempted to look other places. Oh, like I need something to comfort me. So let's say I'm later that day, I'm on my computer and just um, doing normal like internet thing. Maybe I need to like buy something on Amazon or something. And then I'm like, ah, oh, man, like I remember that show on YouTube and I can just little bit by little bit, like I could get swept away into something that's like trying to take and fill this void inside because of what my flesh is desiring. So I've got the, the enemy trying to influence me here and draw me into the world, into a fleshly way of meeting my needs. And it's sinful because mm. I'm not turning to the Lord in any of that. So. Mm. Okay. That could be a scenario in that way. Yeah, so you've got a situation that kind of appeals to your flesh, mm -hmm. and then in, in whatever way there's this temptation mm -hmm. that kind of is trying to, to bring you into the, the worldly way of dealing with things where, mm -hmm. like what would... Okay, so then let, we're talking about godly choices. Right. So what what would the godly choice be in that scenario that mm. would kind of put a brick, you know, in, mm -hmm. in the building in a good way? Yeah. Yeah, I think in that situation specifically, just humbling myself and choosing to love um, would be the very first thing. <laughs> um, denying myself and making room for the spirit to work, to love through me to my wife. Maybe she ha didn't sleep well that night, you know, maybe she, and she just needs some extra, you know, for me to come alongside of her to love her. Mm -hmm. And so in that way, I could choose to sow to the spirit and put in a brick of love <laughs> right. rather than retreating, withdrawing, and try to, trying to find um, help and comfort some other way. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and so then you can definitely see how every day mm -hmm. you can either really be making steps in a godly direction or you can be, you can be regressing because yeah. that, like you were saying, that day, that one situation can easily lead into other situations where yes. you do go and you do watch that show on YouTube and, you know, maybe there was something there that really grips you and then maybe you go even yeah. further and mm -hmm. look at something sensual on the internet or potentially even view pornography. From there, it could be that you start hiding that from your wife. You're yeah. not telling her, you're not living in the light. I mean, th I think that's what you're trying to communicate is like, this has big... Yes. Big implications yeah. for it's, our lives. And it's amazing how quickly we can just, we can be on a good track, you know, especially at the beginning for me, you know, man, I'm like doing really well. And then just, it seems like the smallest thing would completely derail me. And I'd be like, what in the world? How did I ever end up here? You know, uh 
Um, but this is how, <laughs> coming back to this now, I'm like seeing this was based in those early choices that I made. I made a choice that ended up getting me off track. Mm. 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 Okay, so we have these sources of temptation and you mentioned um, the world, the flesh, and the devil. And two of those sources are, are outside of us, you know, the world and the devil. Mm -hmm. But we also have this um, source of temptation, which is like inside of us. Yeah, It's just our fallen nature that without any help just wants to be led astray, wants to be deceived, wants to be drawn into the world. And so Paul, I think this is in Romans, um, makes this statement where he says, do not make any provision for the flesh to satisfy its lusts. What is he, what's he talking about there? Yeah, so he's describing on just a normal day, my tendency, he's describing a tendency within us to just make room for the flesh to have its way. So that's just the basic, like ground level as human beings, that's how we operate. So we have this tendency on a daily basis to make decisions or to, to leave room for what our flesh wants so that when the opportunity arises, I can, you know, fulfill its desires. Hmm. So that being the case, I'm going to have to make intentional decisions to, uh, to, to not let that happen. Um, so I think Paul is describing that, the tendency and that, that reality that we have to be very intentional not to ro leave room for that. Okay. Can you, can you think of some, I mean, you've done a lot of counseling. Yeah. Can you mm -hmm. think of some instances or examples like really common ones where a person just is making provision for the flesh and you're like okay this is what paul is saying you can't do this right i think honestly one of the biggest areas at least for the younger generation that i counsel with mostly um, is their smartphone that's a huge area of temptation um, especially of influences of the world um, where social media can easily be a just a pathway into sin for them, but all their friends are on it. Like, you know, there's a lot of presumably good reasons to be on social media. Um, at least that's the way we think. Um, but that can be a huge area of making provision for the flesh, especially if someone is uh, habitually going into sin f in that way if, or from those areas. So. The smartphone, smartphones can be a huge area of that. Um, internet can be another one, you know, at just having access, unlimited access and unfiltered access, you know. It can just, or just having a known backdoor to some of your, um, yeah, filtering uh, apps or whatever you use. Just not being super intentional about this kind of, like, uh, about, taking care of some of these things can be just that, making provision. Yeah, that's really good because that is showing, again, just these are the little choices mm -hmm. that we make, like not canceling my social media account or not blocking access to certain things, but knowing that like, man, this is a real source of temptation. Those are those, those little choices that end up having, for some people, like really serious consequences. Mm -hmm. um, and for those who haven't listened to the whole series, um, I would recommend going back and listening to episode 513, Keep Your Home Holy, because that is, I know for, I know when we're talking to people who are graduating the residential program or whatever, it's like, man, having a safe, godly atmosphere in the home is one of the biggest, most critical decisions you can make. Because that's where you're going to spend. You need a place where you can retreat to, you know? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. out of these atmospheres that the enemy is creating, out of the spirit of the world. And if you go home and your home is like, there's all these sources of temptation, it's like, man, where are you ever going to rest right. in the Lord? Yes. Um, okay, so let's talk about something related to making provision for the flesh. 
I was thinking about this a couple years ago that if Paul is saying, don't make provision for the flesh, I was like, wow, what if, what if we thought in terms of I should be making provision for the spirit, kind of the opposite, making provision not for the flesh but for the spirit because that's also going to have a kind of a consequence of, of helping me to obey. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think that's an amazing way of looking at this because really in biblical counseling, we talk about this all the time. We, Whenever you have a put off, you need to replace it with something um, because otherwise you're just, you know, you're just trying to stave off the flesh and but you're not filling it with something good. So this is definitely a biblical, um, what do you want to call it, framework to think about this. So um, but this is, um, I'm just, I was just thinking about this for myself, like how does this work? And I, I thought of Psalm 16, it's one of my favorite Psalms. Um, okay. But uh, verse five says, the Lord is my chosen portion and my cup, you hold my lot. And even there, it's that, that word chosen, you know, this, this is a choice, I'm choosing this. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. Mm. And then in verse 11, um, he says, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. And, you know, there's a special place reserved in the Lord's heart for people who actually intentionally seek him to know him, to be with him, um, to really, to seek their pleasure in life from him. Um, and so some of the ways that that can look like it, I mean, we talk about it all the time, but <laughs> spending time in the word, it's like, this is just very basic stuff, but needful. Like I've got to make intentional provision for the spirit in my life inviting Jesus, making space for Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the biggest um, defenses against the world and the devil is being in a personal relationship with Jesus that actually satisfies. That's like the biggest thing for me. And so making space for that to happen is like number one on my priority list. Mm. Yeah, so... It's like if you want to be able to, let's say that your job is like manual labor, mm -hmm. you know, and you're a construction worker and you're trying to think about, okay, how am I going to be able to do my job? A big, big part of it is just eating, mm -hmm. right? Like if you say, ah, I don't need to eat, but then you try to go work, yeah, you're not going to have the strength. So that that choice, that base, like you were saying, that baseline foundational choice of every day I'm feeding my spirit yes. is actually going to have a, an effect down the line, yep. which I think is something that a lot, of, a lot of people don't make the connection. I know I definitely never did, but it's like Pastor Steve would just like ram it into us. Mm -hmm. Listen, how are you going to have the strength to fight off the flesh if you're not feeding the spirit, mm -hmm. um, we try to live in our own strength. Yeah. Um, I like what you said too, just about if we're satisfied in Jesus, that, that deals with a lot of the temptations that we experience in our daily life. Just right off the bat, the yes. things that would have tremendous power and appeal. Yes are just dealt with because we're satisfied. Yes, mm -hmm. and I've, I've used this illustration, the illustration of, you know, if you've just eaten out with your friend um, at like, Texas Roadhouse and you had like this amazing steak and you know, you're, you've just stuffed yourself and you're on the way home, maybe you're driving down through downtown and you stop at a stoplight and a homeless man comes up to your door offering you a, a three-day-old cheeseburger from McDonald's, like, are you gonna take that? Absolutely not. Like, it's, 
Not even a question. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> However, if you thought about it in this way, if you were somewhere where you didn't have access to any food for three days, and that same homeless man approached you and offered you that three-day-old hamburger, you're going to take it. No questions asked. Like, it's better than starving, right? So that's, that's a uh, illustration I've used with my counselees a lot of times with this very thing. What are you feasting on? If you're hungry and you're not being satisfied spiritually in the Lord, you're going to be so vulnerable to any suggestion that the world or the enemy comes to you with. Mm -hmm. But if you're satisfied in Jesus, it'll be easy to say, no, I, I just don't have time. I, I'm I have what I need, I'm sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. So I think one one last thing that we probably need to talk about as far as choices and temptation is just the fact that <laughs> I don't to use the to use the phrase, the struggle is real. Mm -hmm. Right? Like you can get to a point where you're just tired of being tempted. Which mm -hmm. I, and I think especially early on in your Christian life. There's just the battle can be really fierce yeah. at times. And I think the feeling can be, I wish that this wasn't a battle and I just want to get to the place where I'm no longer tempted. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I remember Pastor Ed um, Book re recounting a story along these lines that he was telling a friend of his that very thing. I just want to stop being tempted. And his friend was like, uh, well... The Bible says that Jesus was tempted in every way, just w as we are. Mm -hmm. Do you really think that you're going to get to a spiritual place that Jesus didn't get to? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's really wise. Yeah. Right? Like, so what we need is not a lack of temptation, but the strength to go through it when it comes. What, what are the things that you use to encourage yourself when you're facing those battles? <sighs> I think, so just to preface this, I think it's important for me, it has been very important for me, I should say it that way, to really, really just pound it into myself by through the Word of God that suffering is a natural and needed part in my Christian life. Otherwise, um, my view of temptation is going to tend to like have that kind of like what you were saying, like, ah, like, why can't I just get rid of this temptation? Like, just be done with it and move on. Um, but if I'm seeing temptation as suffering, which Hebrews talks about, right? It says that Jesus suffered when he was tempted. So Jesus suffered temptation. And like what Pastor Ed was saying, his friend telling him, you know, do we think we're above Jesus? <laughs> like, as his disciples, Jesus promised us, we will suffer persecution. Whatever it is, like whether it's from other people, the world, just temptation is another form of persecution. And so when I go through these trials, this is normal. I have to like remind myself so much of that. This is what I need actually. So how this kind of plays out in a, in a um, what do you want to call it, like a practical way for me, um, is I, re I try to remember Jesus' suffering. Trying to actually, so this is uh, whatever situation I'm in. This is a hard situation. I'm being tempted. It's just not ending, and maybe I'm uh, just tired of this battle. Okay, in that moment, I need to turn back and remember Jesus. Um, just remembering what he went through on a daily basis while he was here. You know, all the, the Pharisees and the way they were always trying to get at him and tempt him and, and draw him into a trap and, you know, looking for his life, you know. Um, some of the other ways, like his disciples constantly just didn't seem to get it, you know could feel very lonely at times, I would imagine, as a human, you know, the human side of Jesus, just like, is, it's just, his whole life is just struggle and suffering, if you look at it in that way. And so, 
seeing Jesus always gives me a fresh, it gives me a fresh courage to mm. just continue on. Just like what Hebrews says, consider him who endured such opposition. Um, what was it? And then the end says, so that you will not become weary and lose heart. And so when I'm remembering Jesus, uh, that helps me. And a prayer that I've learned to pray in those times is, Lord, um, receive the reward of your suffering through this. Like, this is not about me. This is about you. I want you to receive the reward of your suffering. I want to remember you. You suffered. And so that has been very helpful um, as well. Um, uh, something that I've, I've found great help in is setting my mind intentionally on eternal things, specifically eternal reward. Mm. Um, I don't know if we do this em enough um, or if we talk about this enough, um, but there's real reward if I make the right choice in this situation. <laughs> like mm. we were talking earlier, I'm, I'm taking steps in one way, one direction or the other, I'm I'm putting in bricks, you know, for good or for ill. Um, and if I make the right decision, if I continue to fight, there's going to be some real reward for this. And so, some scriptures that I like um, that illustrate this is Romans eight, eight eighteen. Uh, Paul says, "For I consider that the sufferings of this present time." are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. And 2 Corinthians 4, uh, 16 through 17, he says, So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light and momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. So sometimes when I'm just in the battle, taking a moment to just reflect on some of these passages can be so invigorating. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes I can feel like my spiritual man is just like fainted on the ground. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm just like done. I don't, and when I just take the time to meditate on some of these great promises, I can just feel life coming back into me and courage and faith being reignited and, and I have enough strength to keep going, you know, one more day or one more hour, whatever it is. So that's one way that I've really found a blessing as well. Mm. Yeah, what, what you just said, I think, is really, really important that God has not... God has no intention of removing temptation from anyone's life. Um, not because he's just like, I'm going to make sure they're as tempted as possible. But he, yeah, it, it's like, um, like you said, the, the temptation is actually producing something. If you, if you handle it, it's yes. actually doing something very, very good for you. Yes. And why would God remove that? Mm -hmm. You know, um, yeah. why would He remove the thing that is, if you handle it rightly, is making you strong and and a uh, virtuous, um, I don't full of character kind of person? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we lose sight of that, especially when we're in the middle of that struggle and that fight sometimes of that yeah. like this is this is working for my good you know another romans 8 quote we use it a lot <laughs> just in general a christian christianity god is using everything in my life for good mm. but do we believe that do we live that that's the challenge um so and so this this is where this is really good too is thinking about the fact that this is not all about me. So sometimes we feel very isolated. The enemy tries to isolate us and be like, okay, this is only, you're just the only one that's fighting this and nobody understands me and all of this. Reminding myself, this is not about me. 
is very helpful. Turning my eyes to see, you know, again, rooting myself in the truth of Scripture, I can see there's a lot of benefits to suffering, especially suffering through temptation. Um, I can't remember the exact uh, scripture for this, but Paul, I think, somewhere mentions how when we go through affliction and we're comforted by the Lord, then after that, we're able to give the same comfort with which we've been comforted. So just remembering that is very helpful for me when I'm in that. This is actually going to work out for someone else's benefit down the road. God is so good that he is looking out to be for this other person <laughs> who needs me to go through this so that I can minister to them at that point with effectiveness so that it's not just a bunch of head knowledge like, oh yeah, like go look at the scripture and do this. And But I have no experience in that myself. Like he really wants, the Lord wants to use this in someone else's life. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna be a much more effective thing if I've gone through it myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I appreciate what you're saying. Um, thank you for sharing that because I think, number one, it just helps to see that our daily choices are not insignificant. Like there's a real, where where we're going to be next week, next mm -hmm. month, next year is in large part dependent on how we handle today. Yes. So it really elevates just the importance of what we do on a daily basis. But, you know, this is a hard world that we're living in. You know, it's hard to live in a godly way. We're, we're definitely coming into a time where it is not going to be easy to live a righteous life. <laughs> yeah. Right? It's going to be more and more difficult. Yes. There will be more and more opportunities where, man, to, to stand up and do the right thing is going to require something of us. And so I think the Lord is just urging all of us, like, take today seriously, and I'm with you. Mm -hmm. He yes. really wants us to make it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, he is, that's something that I've, I've been thinking about as well, is that Jesus is with me in this. And so I, it's not like he's kind of like abandoned me in this, like, okay, now figure it out. Yeah, hope you um, make it. Yeah, hope you make it. <laughs> no, he's with us. That's his promise. That's He sent us the Holy Spirit. He lives within us. You know, it's so easy to forget. Like, just even when maybe you're in that fire, remember, wow, the Holy Spirit is living in me right now. He's with me. And so Jesus walking with us personally is going to be one of our, I think, our greatest um, advantages. And if I've learned how to walk in that, to just simply walk with Jesus, he's gonna take me through. Though the fire comes, the waters rise, you know, I'm not gonna be drowned, it's not gonna overflow me, it's not gonna, the, the fire's not gonna singe me, it's not gonna kindle upon me, because he's with me, and I'm walking with him. Yeah, amen. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome.